Hi, I'm Rod Rorick. Welcome back to Rorick News, helping you become a better you. Today we're gonna to talk about what a consumer and a patient should know about your healthcare team, especially in plastic surgery. You know, who are the healthcare professionals, what they do, how they interact with you, and why it's good to have a team of experts that works with plastic surgeons. So I'm very pleased to have David Weir with me. He's an amazing nurse practitioner who's been with me now four years. Four years, isn't it, isn't it amazing? And you know, it took me a long time, I'm a slow learner, it took me a long time to select somebody that I really trusted to help me in what I do because of I'm very, very particular about my patients and my patient care. So David, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. You bet. So David, tell me about your experience and you're a nurse practitioner but uh, you you grew up in yeah so i've been in and out of the uh, beauty realm or the aesthetic realm for about 21 years mm. i'm a lot closer to 40 than i am 30 nowadays so he doesn't look it yeah <laughs> thanks for a little <laughs> bit of help uh, you know, a little help um but yeah i've been in and out of this world primarily in it uh for the past four years um and then do you remember when i was writing for you yes when i was doing my master's degree so um, i take that into account i've been working with him we met their uh, mutual friend and I've uh, I've been full time now for four years right. working with you right. so um, I am a certified nurse practitioner I do have my master's degree um, but I have a wealth of knowledge that I've just kind of cultivated from makeup skills to knowing a lot about the skin uh, doing skin care doing cells in the industry um, all the way up to taking a little hiatus in the emergency room till I got bored right. there so. right so you know I think one of the things that people get confused about is that you know all over Instagram and all of social media, they, they talk about, hey, I'm an, inter, I'm an injector, I, I can do this, I can do it better. And, you know, so shed some light on that, David, because, you know, it, it's not just, you know, physicians that are, are good injectors. In fact, sometimes in some areas, physicians aren't quite as good and skilled as others because it's all about practice and expertise mm -hmm. and focus. So, so David, help me understand how that works. Yeah. And I don't want to put you on the spot, yeah. but you know, okay, you're not working in a spa, you're not working in a little mall, in a corner little uh, place. Uh, and you know, we see those patients all the time. So tell me about that. Just sort it out for the consumer. Um, that's a very large question. Um, I don't think we have a full hour to discuss it, so I'll try <laughs> to narrow it down to the key points. So uh, one thing that every consumer needs to know is that there is no officially recognized training system to become an injector. Um, there are injectors out there um, that can take a four-hour online course and become certified to do no, David, just for inject for people, for the audience, yeah. and injectors means that you're injecting, you know, neuromodulators, neuromodulators. like Bo Botox and fillers and doing other device oriented mm -hmm. things like even lasers. Yeah. So, yeah. so how do you, so. you know, obviously it turns on to safety mm -hmm. and it definitely turns out to be a huge safety concern. Um, you know, I find the best injectors in the country um, are doing this full time. Okay. Right. Now, as an injector myself, um, Anytime I feel really good at what I do, I know that I need to keep learning. I know that I need to attend another meeting. I need to read a new article. Right. I need to shadow someone because the game of filler and neurotoxin or your Botox or uh, Juvederm or Restylane um, is constantly evolving. Right. It's uh, no different than plastic surgery. Yeah. You know, I'm an expert in what I do, but I always feel I have to learn something new Absolutely. to get better. Absolutely. And, you know, even when I was getting my master's degree, um, there's no training for filler and I know, I know. or minimally invasive devices and um, you know for plastic surgeons you know they get a lot of that kind of in their fellowship well them. yeah sometimes yeah. And, and most plastic surgeons actually don't get a lot of their training in, in residency I mean yeah. my fellows get it they, they spend a lot of time with me but unfortunately that's kind of a, a little bit of a, a deficiency in a lot of places yeah. and a lot of programs so just because you have an MD or a nurse P an MP means really doesn't mean yeah. much. It gets you into the ballpark. Yeah. And you know, a, a really wise guy that I know that I like to joke around mm -hmm. with, this guy over here, <laughs> uh, once told me, you know, to be the best, you have to train with the best. So I really took that to heart. So I'm constantly seeking out new education opportunities, attending meetings, um, lecturing myself, teaching people. I think teaching people right. how to do what we do is the best way to also learn 
your craft and hone yep. your craft. Learn what people are doing that they might be doing right or doing wrong. Um, or and that's you. why I hired David because he's an excellent teacher. Yep. You know, if you can't teach it, you can't do it. Yep. So I really, I love that. 100%, 100%. Um, but you know, as far as like certifications, there's no, there's only one certification that I could think of and it's from the uh, International Society of Plastic and Aesthetic Nurses um, yeah. that actually can certify you to be an aesthetic nurse specialist. Um, but there's no rhyme or reason um, or any world accredited body that says this is how you become a good injector. And on Instagram, I see this all the time, master injector or right. top 100 so, injector. And, you know, that's just, I mean, I could wake up tomorrow and call myself a master injector. Yeah. But so, okay, so no, David, you've, <laughs> you've, you've got them all excited and yeah. you got them scared. So, okay, Sorry. how do they know? What are like the five things they need to look for? Okay, the five things to look for in a good injector. Are they confident in their skill? Okay. Yeah. Can they talk to you about the science and the safety of what you're having done? Can they show you before and afters? And I'm not talking, you know, everyone's a superstar on Instagram. Everyone's a superstar right. on their website. I'm talking their last 10 before and afters. What right. are your last 10 cases? And you taught me that, yeah. you know, show me what your last five patients look like. Right. Um, that's, you know, the third thing. Um, the fourth thing, are they growing the knowledge in the community you know are they lecturing are they teaching are they, are they respected writing yeah. papers? are they respected are they are they published um you know that's something else and then um are they honest with you right. you know because i received my training from you i'm very conservative um, right. i am you know start slow slowly build up um i would never have someone come in and say okay i'm gonna do you know two thousand dollars worth of botox and five thousand dollars worth of filler like it's just yeah. it, it's just you have to have a good relationship yeah. with your injector um, but also know that don't do it, crazy stuff yeah don't do crazy don't, stuff, don't do crazy stuff. <laughs> and it's okay if your injector tells you no if they say you don't need that yeah. or you, or, you know two cc's is too much in your lips yeah you know, no, 100%. let's start yeah. with that you yeah. know right and, yeah, I have to agree. So I would say that's kind of my, my top five. Yeah, those are th those are very key points to know. And I, and I really think that kind of gets you into the ballpark. And, you know, you have to have a compatibility, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you have to really like that person. And I think, you know, because sometimes, you know, they're not always excellent outcomes, but they're safe outcomes. And, they, and that's what they want. They say, listen, you know, okay, I need a Botox or a neuromodular touch-up. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all human. But you know where to go to get safety and honesty. And I yeah. think that's important. So, okay, let's hone down to what you do in, in my practice as a nurse practitioner. I mean, David is very unique because not only does he do a lot of neuromodulators and fillers, but you know, we do a lot of innovative technology and studies, which really is kind of, we're doing things that you're gonna see in two, three years or not. You yeah, know, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my, my job is pretty wide encompassing. You know, uh, every day is a little bit different. When people ask me to describe my job, I say, I mean, you know, about 70 percent full time aesthetics, you know, doing non-invasive, minimally invasive procedures. We have a great reciprocal relationship because if you think there's something that they need that I do the best, you send them to me. And if they come to me and I think they need surgery, I send them to you. Right. Uh, so it's a great reciprocal relationship that we have. And then about uh, probably 20% of my job is being uh, involved in the studies that we're doing in the office. Right. So th those are phase two, phase three, safety, efficacy, non-inferiority, new indication studies. We're looking at products that you won't even see for five to seven right. years, or you may not ever see at all. Right. You know, we're looking at injection patterns that no one's actually doing, you know. Um, so we're, we're in the forefront and leading the innovation that's gonna be happening down in the pipeline. Right. So Which is very exciting. I mean, we'll, we'll share with you some of these techniques and technologies like uh, Morpheus. You know, InMode is an amazing, innovative company. And, you know, for the last five years, we've been working with them on refining so much of what they do. And, and it's been amazing. Like Morpheus, I know so many of you now think that Morpheus is new because I know Kim Kardashian is using it on her abdomen and maybe other places. But, but I can tell you, it's not new. But guess who's done a lot of the innovative techniques and technology to really refine it with InMode? And it's been David. So tell us a little bit about that. So where, where does Morpheus fit in? Because it's such a hot topic today. Okay, yeah, Morpheus. So um, there's several different ways to um, tighten the skin. Uh, radio frequency, specifically uh, um, fractionated radio frequency using microneedling. Right. 
right. is a way that we could do it in the office. Basically, with Morpheus, there's these tiny needles that go underneath the skin, and they emit a electrical charge. That helps to tighten the skin from underneath to the surface. So I like it for any sort of mild to moderate skin laxity or kind of that crepiness that people can get as we age, you know, thinning of the, the it, skin. And It works of, great. In yeah, fact, we'll great. show you the technique mm -hmm. and how it works, and then yeah. David will show you some amazing results. You can't mm -hmm. do it with surgery. Those yeah. patients who come in with you know, that crepey skin in their arms. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Kim K did kind of uh, revitalize it. You know, yes. I, I can't even quantify Oh, probably over 10,000 more fish treatments. It's, I mean, I've done a lot of it. Um, so I was, I was really excited to see that Kim brought it back into the forefront um, because people are asking about it again. We've been doing it for years, but now, right. now it's popular because of her. So um, it is a wonderful tool. Um, it's not, a hundred percent the right choice for every single patient right. so you have to go in you know when you go into a place that offers that you sometimes i have to look at my my whole tool belt all my paint brushes and look at your what your actual right. issue it, is and sometimes a multimodal approach is appropriate sometimes you have to do a little injectable sometimes you have to do right. some morphous sometimes you have to target with skincare you know it's just not a one uh it's not a one trick right. pony it's not a one uh, a fix all for everything right and and the key with morpheus and and this is why David is such a great teacher is that it's not just Morpheus Morpheus it's done in different levels different ways and it's serial treatment mm -hmm. and and that's why when I see patients say oh I had a Morpheus treatment didn't work well really it's like saying you know I had Botox someplace and it didn't work it's yeah. it's always proximal to the needle or the device so yeah. so that's what you need to know before yeah. you go and and it's serial treatment and mm -hmm. it's really how you treat it and the type of head you use yeah. right yeah I think it's uh, really proximal to whoever's holding the device I mean yes. whoever's doing the actual treatment could uh, make or break the treatment uh, because, I, again, I, I do some education for InMode, uh, and I find that some people are using it, you know, completely um, wrong. <laughs> right. No, uh, I know. Well, of course, you're not getting good outcomes it, because it, you're not using it the way it, that you should. Exactly. So. And that's why we have to teach people yeah. to do it well. I mean, and what, you know, and, and seriously, we're agnostic to, to who, if you want to learn to do it and do it well, we'll teach you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I really think that's important, but do it well, do it safely, and don't hurt people, you know, and don't do crazy stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the most important thing. So, I mean, that's a good example, and we'll show you some examples of that. Mm -hmm. So, so what about some other techniques and technology let's talk about cellulite you know we're really in deep in cellulite you know every woman from 7 to 79 has cellulite and it's just what you see so yeah. t david tell us a little bit about that recent history yeah. there's been a big evolution in cellulite treatment now it's really interesting because there's about eight and a half million women in the united states right now and 90 percent of women in this population will have cellulite yeah right? um this saddest part about it is that 50 percent of women will believe that it's their fault that it's, oh. it's their diet it's their exercise and you know cellulite is an equal opportunist it doesn't matter what color your skin is how old you are right. if you're really really skinny if you're uh, um, uh, a little on the heavier side it doesn't care right. and honestly i find most women that are afflicted with cellulite um, are tend to be the leaner women uh, right you know it's more apparent right. in them um, and you know there was a, a harris poll study that i was looking at uh, that they did for consumers, and it's like a, an average of 60% of that 90% of women want us to talk to them about cellulite, right. okay? Um, and there hasn't really been good treatment options. Well, that's why we don't like to talk about yeah, it, because we can't be, and it's yeah, not we can't surgery. Do we like, can't yeah, do yeah. But, uh, but, but there tell are us some, about yeah, the recent things. That, yeah. yeah, there's two recent things that I really like uh, and that we do in our office. Um, one is an injectable treatment. Um, it's a series of treatments. Right. Um, I am more on the conservative side, so I tell people, in the study, they did three treatments. It's, it's quote. It's right. quote. Yeah, so and what is quote? It's a collagenase. Um, basically, it's an injectable enzyme that causes enzymatic sub, uh, subcision of the fibrous septi, right. which is the little band underneath the skin that pulls the dimpling of the right. skin and causes the cellulite dimple. Yeah. So you inject it into the dimple. Um, the dimple uh, progressively gets less apparent until right. it's uh, minimized. So I never say we're going to get rid of your cellulite, but we can greatly improve the appearance of right. the, the cellulite. Serial treatments mm -hmm. and one of the you know that's the upside and it it lasts but there's one downside and that's the bruising yeah and it, how do you obviate that i mean obviously we, we're we're beginning to work uh -huh. with the group that, that has de yeah. developed this the way that the actual collagenase the enzyme works is 
its main side effect is that it causes the little blood vessels in the areas to leak. Um, so it is the most impressive bruising that you will ever see. <laughs> uh, and we're talking like you look like a month old banana. On the <laughs> yeah, really it's, it's on, pretty, on the first treatment. On the first treatment. The first treatment. Subsequent yeah. treatments, yeah. those vessels get stronger, so they don't right. leak as much. So the bruising is not as apparent. But the first one, I mean. I was impressed with it. I was right. like, wow, that's some good bruising. Um, so it's definitely <laughs> something that I recommend to do it uh, in the months that you're not going to be in bikini season or, you know, however uh, your life works. Um, but it is a wonderful treatment to, uh, that's minimally invasive, very easy to do, very easy for the patient right. to have. Um, and then you just have to have, go to someone who knows how to mitigate bruising. Right. And how do you do it? How do we do it? We've yeah. talked about this a lot. Well, you know, uh, one of the privileges of working in our office is that we're always tinkering. We're looking at studies. We're trying to figure out what's the best right. way to approach it. So um, I have a handful of ways that I can help mitigate the bruising, improve the bruising, everything from just a topical uh, product. Um, Elastin's uh, Repair and Reform is a right. wonderful bruising mm -hmm. mitigation um, if you don't want to come back in the office. If you can come back in the office, typically around day three or four, we'll do some bulk heating with radio frequency to speed up circulation in the area. Right. That will help right. heal the break it down. faster, break it down. Um, so there's there's a- And, and transamic acid? Transexamic acid is another thing that we like to, right. I like to use. Um, the only thing is I don't like to prescribe it on women who are on hormonal birth control. Right. Um, so if you're younger and you're on birth control, there's other modalities that we have to use. Um, but besides that, for most women, it's a very, very safe drug. You right. take it for five days and it greatly uh, impacts the and reduces is the amount of bruising. Right, and it's how you do it in the compression garments. I think that exemplifies exactly why. You don't want to go to a spa or someplace that yeah. just does just does it to get oh, to yeah. get your check and yeah. cash it. We care about you and your result and and I think that's the beauty. You know, we want to make sure that you have a great outcome. So yeah. and then there's another recent study light and we're just gonna talk briefly about uh, yeah. that's <laughs> uh, you know it's uh, uh, yeah, so um, what you're uh, leading up to is a product called Ovali. It yeah, is a, a manual subsision of the cellulite. But, yeah, it's actually um, an it, innovative it, device. It's an innovative device. It travels underneath the skin. Uh, we target the band itself. Instead of injecting something to um, cause the band to break down, we actually cut it manually. Right. Um, so it's a little bit more of an instant gratification. Um, it's typically one treatment and done. Um, it is done in the, uh, we could do it in the office or in the OR. Right. Um, but it's uh, it's a little bit more of an, of an invasive procedure. But, but it's done in the office. But it's I mean, done in the office. You know, yeah. we can do it in the operating room. It, it's, mm -hmm. I like it. It's, you know, of course, a surgeon and we like it. It's a very yeah. slick technique. <laughs> it is technology. very surgery. Uh, yeah, but focused. you can, this helps you not to miss the cellulite yeah. dimple. Mm -hmm. It's really methodical. You, you, you catch yeah. it and you release it and you cut it. Yeah. So it's really great. So that's, so there's some evolution, but none of them are, you know, are perfect. You know, there's other things that are in the horizon that we're actually going to be and are using. But uh, so these are just an examples of what we do. So David, you know, what's your average day like? And then what separates you as a nurse practitioner working with me and my practice from everybody else? Mm -hmm. Oh, average. this is your time to shine. Yeah. No. Ooh. What is an average day like? It's different every day. And that's why I really like working where I do, because <laughs> I'm not doing the same thing over and over again. He doesn't like to come in early. Like sometimes he no, helps me in the I'm, OR. But I'm not a morning person. If I have to be there at seven, I, 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 I just with him. I, I'm like, I have to you? text him twice. Yeah. He yeah. does okay. have to wake me up. Uh, and then I text him. Are you sure seven? Are you really sure I have to be there at seven? Because seven really sounds like eight to me. Uh, yeah. I'm not a morning person. My perfect day. If I was on a, a beauty pageant contest, would be start at 10. <laughs> 10 a.m. would be the perfect time to start every That's about day. my midday. Yeah, yeah. He's almost done with his day by then, uh, or at least with surgery. So I'm, I'm not a morning person, but uh, going into work, you know, sometimes I'm doing skin tightening treatments. Sometimes I'm doing cellulite treatments. Some days are more heavy with, you know, your Botox, Dysport, Juvo, Xeomin, um, and soon to be Daxify. Those are all neurotoxins. Yep. Um, I use the whole uh, kaleidoscope of fillers out there to be non-invasive, to revolumize mm -hmm patients. I, I'm, a, I'm a lover of biostimulants, so that's going to be your Sculptra and your Radiance right. products all over the body. So blending that in with seeing you know, research patients or doing evaluations or um, even up mixing mixing up drugs for some of the studies that we're doing. Uh, that's part of my day. What else do I do in a day? You, um, sometimes I get to play medical assistant when our uh, fabulous <laughs> medical assistant, Letty, is on vacation. I think she takes off more than I do. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, no, she so, does. She does but she's yeah. And I, uh, we, uh, we have a good time at our office. Yeah. But, um, sometimes yeah. I'm um, walking patients through all the post-op instructions, removing sutures, um, yeah. talking to them. You know, yeah, so it's, 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 it's teamwork. And it's yep. a teamwork. Yeah. The teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. And I think, you know, the other thing is what David just talked about, 
just reminds me that when you come to our office, you get the whole gamut, an array of hottest and best technology and neuromodulators and fillers that works. And it works specifically because there's over 20 fillers now available and there's going to be a new neuromodulator, which we'll talk about in a second. But we will do what works best for you and tell you about the pros and cons of each because none of them are perfect. You know, and I think that's the beauty of it. You know, like Radius, you know, and Mm. it's a great product. It's great for the hands, great for deep, uh, you know, deep in the face, the mailer area. But, you know, it's very selective. I mean, I know all the fillers and and because I've actually done research on on most of them. And, you know, I'm working with incredible companies, you know, Galderma and Allergan. You know, we've done so many studies with those companies and MERS and so many others. And I think the, the good thing is, you know, when you're doing these studies, you really, really get to see what the product works and how it works and how it, uh, and, and what the outcome is. These are things you're going to see in several years. And, and I think, you know, the great thing about FDA trials is that they really, really make an attempt to be safe. And I think that that's really uh, laudable. And I applaud all the yeah. companies to do that. So it's kind of the gamut of things, knowing that you're going to get what's best and individually suited mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, it's not a paint by numbers game. No, I mean, no. And, but you see that so much, like they said, okay, here's it. You're getting 20 units of Botox. Botox and, oh, right. by the way, when we say Botox, it's kind of like Kleenex, you know, it's generic because we use all of them. We use mm-hmm. Botox. We use Dysport, mm-hmm. Xenom and Juvo. I love Juvo as yeah. well yeah. by Evolus. And I think those are all good ones. Well, so when you, when you think of the cookie cutter approach and I, I've seen that in some of the uh, you know, I call them like the drive-through Botox right. venues. Um, you know, the the FDA-approved dose for the upper face alone is 64 units yeah. of Botox. If you're talking strictly Botox, so that's for in between the eyebrows, the forehead lines, and around the eyes. But not everyone. I mean, but look at you. People, you have a little. David has a little more Botox. Uh, neuromodulator. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a. Li- I'm, I like to look a little bit more frozen. Yeah, I don't I still like, like to wiggle my me. eyebrows, but um, <laughs> you know, I don't want any lines or wrinkles. But you know, we have a, a whole gambit of pa- uh, patients. You know, right. I, I have people that are you know in the news that have to have emotion. I have right. actors and actresses right. that have to have emotion. Absolutely, you can't freeze them. And then I have patients that are professional poker players, and they're like, I can't have <laughs> any movement in my face at all. Like, I the only thing I want to move is my eyeballs, and I'm like, I can do that. You <laughs> you know, if that's what you want. But um, really having that uh, relationship with the patient and having a provider right. that knows how to dial it down and how to dial it up, and it only comes with experience. And, you know, right. I, I get a ton of experience because of the FDA trials that we do. And then, of course, working with you and uh, getting to attend all the meetings and speak and whatnot um, on the education forefront. Right. But it's not a cookie cutter approach. Every single patient is different. Every single patient's anatomy is slightly different and their goal is different. Right. And be able to dissect that and make it perfect for them is is my my number one goal when i'm in office right that's exactly right and then there's a teaser for a future podcast we're going to be talking about the hot new neuromodulators coming out there's several coming out that last longer mm-hmm. are they better who knows i think that some people may want to not do that maybe mm-hmm. the last six months and right now mm-hmm. a neuromodulator lasts about three months and mm-hmm. that's good you get to see them but there's hot new things coming out on the horizon. So, so in closing, David, so what are the five things that you would like a consumer to know when they come to a plastic surgeon's office, you know, like, you know, our office yeah. at Dallas Plastic Surgery Institute in Dallas, Texas, about, you know, choosing their, their injector and choosing somebody to look at new, ne- new technology that's way beyond Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. How do they know they're going to get the best, the safest, and a great outcome and, and not get ripped off? I mean, you know, so yeah. many times I see patients say, oh, wow, you did that. And I go, it was a non-result. Or worse than that, they come in and they got these sausage things below their, le- oh. below their eyes because mm-hmm. they had the wrong filler put in mm-hmm. a tear trough, which, by the way, is something you probably should only inject very infrequently because mm-hmm. it doesn't usually look good. So, David? Oh, five things are there. I'll, you know I like yeah, five I things. I know you like yeah. five things, so I'm going to try to come up with five. <laughs> so, no, no, um, no, but you know, the biggest thing is looking at the injector's experience. What are they doing? Right. And being able to discern, you know, there's a new thing just... Uh, it's difficult for patients because I do get patients from social media. Right. Um, but I think some injectors have, you know, have bought thousands and thousands of followers, so they right. look like they're 
right. you know, really credible, but they've been injecting for two months. I'm like, okay, you have a hundred thousand followers, but you've been injecting for two months. Like it's really hard for a patient to navigate that now, you know, a lot, there's a big smoke screen in. Oh, I know. We, have, we have that in plastic surgery too. So, um, you know, when you think about it, you know, uh, coming into the office, you have to, you have to know their, ex their experience, you know, yeah. how long have they been doing it? What are they doing about it? You know, are they teaching? Are they out there educating? Are they publishing papers? Are they doing studies? Um, right. You know, so and, it's really and, the five A's, you know, yeah, yeah. affable, available, affordable, mm -hmm. accountable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Those are very, very, very important. And, and go ahead. Yeah. And really just, you know, what are they doing to keep up with the game? You know, my clients know. I talk about every meeting I go to. I talk about the latest innovations. I talk about what I learned. Um, so my clients are really trained when they come in. They're like, David, where have you been? What have you right, learned? What's right. new? What's on the horizon? But it's just because I'm excited about it. Yep. Um, so that's one thing to look at. Um, of course, I always say look at their before and afters. Right. You know, look right. at not, and not their best. Right. You know, just yeah. their past 10, their past five patients. Right. It's, uh, that, it's that fifth one. It's the accountability, yeah, yeah. you know, that you need to say. And also, nobody's perfect. Yeah. You know, you're no, being yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. And I think know before you yeah. go. And, you know, I think reviews are really um, highly driven now as well. Look at their reviews, you know, uh, and see if there's good ones and bad ones. You know, typically, right. if I am going somewhere, like to a new doctor or to even a new restaurant, like I'll, I'll pan through and I'll look at the top five reviews and I'll look at the worst five reviews. Right. Cause honestly, I mean, I'm not everyone's acquired taste. I'm not going to make every single it, person happy. Exactly. So, I mean, if I, I would say, you know, if they have a couple bad reviews, you know, ask them about that, you know, right. ask, the, ask the provider, why did this person say this? Right. Um, and that's a good conversation opener because it, every, every injector, every surgeon needs to know that they're fallible and know that they're not perfect. Right. And, not and nobody has every single person. Yeah. And that's a whole another topic because, you know, yeah. nobody has perfect reviews, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, God, but you know, yeah. I don't think he's on Google, yeah, no. <laughs> but, but the thing is, you know, that gives you on, and mm -hmm. there are real patient mm -hmm. reviews, you know, you can tell, and of yeah. course this is, you know, you know, just that one second yeah. thing, and because those aren't real reviews, yeah. you know, or if you're out two years, or or like you have two two hundred thousand followers and you've been out a year, yeah. and you have three hundred Google reviews and you've been out two years, that mm -hmm. just doesn't happen. Doesn't real doesn't patient yeah. reviews, real patient results matter. So. Know before you go, find someone you trust, find somebody you can relate to. You can see David is very relatable, and that's why he's part of my incredible aesthetic practice at DPSI. So, you know, please send us your comments, your questions, anything else you'd like to hear from us about healthcare, healthcare professionals, you know, plastic surgery and beyond, okay? Because Rorick knows it's all about helping you become a better you. So thank you, David, yeah. very, very much. Thank you so it's much for having me. Great, yeah, yeah, great having you. All right.